known a summit, it was a very powerful experience for me. Honored to be there and be a part of it. And um, in the midst of doing what I had to do there, it also gave me some time to think toward the Word of God and to prepare and to process how to be more adept at speaking to you out of the volume of the book. We're in Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through 12. When you have it, say amen. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, through whom also he hath made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory <laughs> and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son? Today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. Come on. But about the son, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice <clears throat> will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. My God. He also says, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed, but you. <laughs> Isn't it good? You remain the same, and your years will never end. I want to talk about the timeless thesis of God. The timeless thesis of God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us as we go into your word. I thank you for what you're about to do. I believe you're going to do it. I thank you that it's already done in Christ Jesus. And for this, we give you honor and we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Well, it might be redundant to say so, but I think it's important that we define what is a thesis. In philosophy, years of thesis will state, your thesis will state a position or a claim. It will state a position or a claim. It's to take a stand about something. The thesis is the most important part of your paper, it tells the reader what your stance is on a particular issue or topic and offers reasons for that stance. In, in, in theory then, a thesis has to be argued. It has to be proven. It has to be articulated in such a way that it removes all uncertainty. Now, I'm going to take my time this morning. Okay. 
It must not be lost on us that we are in the book of Hebrews. We then understand that we are reading a thesis that is directed to a group of people with a predisposed idea about God. The book of Hebrews has a theme of better things. Throughout the book of Hebrews, you will read about the better priesthood, the comparison between the Melchizedek priesthood and the Aaronic priesthood, the comparison be between the blood of bullocks and goats and the blood of Jesus, the comparison between the mercy seat on earth and the mercy seat in heaven. It is comparing the former with the latter. It is comparing the old with the new. Hebrews, then, is a disruptive book to the hearer who has embraced the former and doubts the latter. So when you read it, you must read it as a thesis as the author makes his argument to prove his, his thesis of who God is currently, not historically. If you understand that he is dealing with the pejorative that establishes the fact that God is sovereign, sovereign, that God is absolute, that he is complete within himself, that he is the single voice through which God has chosen to speak through in the last days. But in former days, he has spoken to us through the prophets. Now, let's examine that. In former days, he has spoken to us through the prophets in diverse manners and in different ways. So in other words, God has diverse manners and different methods. God has what? Say it again. God has diverse ma methods, manners, <laughs> and different methods. I got confused myself. God has diverse manners and different methods. Why do we need to know that? Because we cannot hem God down to moving a particular way because that is what we are accustomed to. God has diverse ways and different methods. Sometimes people think, like if they have a favorite preacher, and if that preacher's not preaching, they, they cut it off. And the very time you cut it off, God will send the greatest blessings. Because God wants you to know, I have diverse ways and different methods. I don't want you to fall in love with the pipe, I want you to drink the water. I have diverse ways and different methods. So one blind man, he, he spits in his eye and tells him to go to the pool and wash. Another one, he touches him two times and says, what do you see? He has diverse ways and different methods. Another person, one person he raises from the dead by laying on them, putting everybody out the room and laying on them. Another one, he touches the casket and the dead man gets up. He has diverse ways and different methods. Do not lock God down to your formula. He has diverse ways and different methods so that we do not fall in love with his ways or his methods more than we love him. A few weeks ago, I was teaching about Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness. I didn't use the scripture, but I had the scripture in my notes that later the children of Israel started worshiping the brazen serpent. It became an idol because they fell in love with God's methods and not God. A lot of our doctrine is falling in love with God's method and not God. Anytime your doctrine makes you mean, makes you nasty, anytime your doctrine makes you disrespectful and hateful, anytime your doctrine makes you divisive and hateful, you have made a God out of your doctrine more than you love God. If you love God, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one toward another. You can believe whatever you want to believe, but anytime you believe it to the point that you become nasty, then you've fallen in love with his ways and his methods and not God himself. 
And God will test you many times by not showing up in the way, in the manner or the method you expected him to do to see do you still believe me if I don't do it the way you thought I would do it. Oh, come on, talk to me. If, if, uh, let, let me bring this down home. If it doesn't come through who you thought it would come through, do you still believe me even if the who disappointed you? Were you believing on the pipe or were you believing for the water? Whether I bring it in a bucket, a plastic jug, it's still water. Don't be upset if it didn't come through who you thought it was going to come through. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I feel like I'm talking to somebody. I didn't even plan to say this. God said he's going to send it by divers ways and different methods he's still going to get it to you because he's God now I read it in the NIV because I am sensitive to the fact that the NIV breaks down the language simpler uh, and makes it easier and more palatable and more digestible especially for those who are beginning in scriptures but I learned it in the King James Version in the King James Version, it says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners has spoken to us by the prophets, but hath in these last days spoken to us by his son. It starts out with the word God, because he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. Because he is the eternal, everlasting, immutable God. He is the absolute one. He is the absolute source from which all things, do you hear me? All things, all things come from God. God is not a thing. He makes things. He is the manufacturer of things. By him, all things consist. He is God. So the writer doesn't bother to explain him. The book of Hebrews is written, I believe it's written by Apollos. Some people would debate that, but I really believe it's written by Apollos because we don't see this language anywhere else in the Bible like we do in the book of Hebrews. The, Hebrew, the book of Hebrews is both prophetic, it is profound, it is prolific, it is articulate in such a dynamic way that I understand why the apostle Paul would be intimidated when he came to Corinth and they had started following Apollos and he said, I came not to you in swelling words and enticing language but demonstration of the spirit. I get why he said that because Apollos had just left and Apollos was so profound and so prolific that even though Paul was a scholar, I believe there was a degree of intimidation there and he said some are of, our, of Apollos and some are of Paul. One man planted, one man water. God gives the increase. Why are you talking about this? You know, whether you're Apollos or Paul, it matters not. The reason he's having this debate is because Apollos is profound. Further, I believe because Acts 18 talks about Apollos who was fervent in the scriptures, mighty in the scriptures, understanding the way of the Lord. So even in Acts it says Apollos was bad. So when you read the book of Hebrews, you can't run through it, tipping through the tulips like it's easy because Apollos was an intellect even beyond Paul who was known to be brilliant. God always got somebody smarter than you. God's always got somebody brighter than you. Be happy to be who you are. Don't be intimidated by somebody who's got more than you. Understand who you are because nobody can do what you do like you do when you do it. But don't become arrogant and think that you're the only one that can do it because God has a thousand prophets that haven't bowed to Baal, nor kissed the nasty image. Mean, God will raise up somebody while you're still looking and they will replace you. God's got people sleeping up under a bridge with more degrees than you. God's got people locked up in jail who are smarter than you. God's got people who speak so many different languages, it would blow your mind and you've never heard of them and they got no name and you didn't see them on TV, but they exist just because we're not on Facebook doesn't mean we're not there. Just because we don't have followers doesn't mean we don't matter. Just because we haven't been lauded and we haven't written books and we haven't sold out and we're not on the times list does not mean that there is not a profundity, a provocative theological understanding of the magnitude of the authenticity of the erudite charismatic power of God himself. God is God. He will not be explained. He will not be explained. He just exists. He leaps on the page the first word. God, without explanation, without argument, without debate, uh, w w without anybody voting him in or voting him out. He just leaps on the page as a fact 
not debatable, as a fact, not explainable, as a fact, not provable. God, who at sundry times and in diverse matters has spoken unto us by the prophet. If I lost you there, you are already lost. If you don't accept him as an absolute, if you don't accept him as a reality, if I've got to debate you about God, then you're in the wrong room right now. You have to be sure that you understand that God is God. God, who at sundry times and divers, man, we can debate about his timing and his methods, but we cannot debate about his existence. Look at somebody and say, God is God. And he always will be God. Yes, God is God and he always will be God. Everything else in this story changes, but God remains the same. Everything else has changed. His manners change. His times change, but he remains the same. He is the same God. He is absolute. He is stable. He is the foundation. He is the rock. He is all sufficient. He is complete within himself. He is the mighty God. And I am the Lord thy God. I change not. From everlasting Everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. I am God. There is no premise to be made. There is no debate. There is no argument. There is no thesis. This is an absolute. There is no pejorative to be taken. I am God, and beside me there is no other. I alone am God. I look for someone greater than myself, and finding no one greater than myself, I swear by myself that my word is true. I am God. That's why demons tremble. I am God. That's why witches run. I am God. That's why demonic powers beg me. Leave us alone because I'm God. I'm God in your world. I'm God in their world. I'm God in heaven. I kick Lucifer out of heaven because I'm God. I'm in charge and it is what I say it is. If I say live, they can't kill you. The gun can't kill you. The cancer can't kill you. The trouble can't kill you. The disease can't kill you because I'm God over cancer. I'm God over leukemia. I'm God over diabetes. I'm God over kidney failure. I'm God. God! Somebody shout God. The very notion of him causes us to adore him. The very notion of him causes us to worship him. The very notion of him causes us to understand that we are covered and protected by the sovereign God. Sovereign means he absolutely reigns. He reigns over warlocks. He reigns over riches. He reigns over roots. He reigns over hate. He reigns over malice. He reigns over disease. He reigns over molecules. By him all things consist. He is God. He is God. Can you get it in your head? He is God. We worship about him. We sing about him, but we don't teach about him. He's God. He's God. He sits in the circle of the earth. Hallelujah. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. He's God. The court is in order. When he sits down, everything comes to order. When he sits down, everything comes to session because he's God. He's complete. He's a complete circle. He doesn't lack anything, having neither beginning nor end. He is the ancient of days. He is the mighty God. He is absolute. I am God. God! Sit down. I ain't going to get very far if I keep going like this. I, I'm still on the first word. <laughs> Somebody holler God. Oh, do you understand what you said when you said God? Oh, the devil understands what you said when you said God. Somebody shout God. God is not church. God is not doctrine. God is not denomination. God is not religion. God is not a building. God is not a place. God is not a direction. Face east, face west, face north, force south. I don't care which way you go. He's God in the south. He's God in the north. He's God in the east. He's God in the west. I don't care which way you face. Lay me down. Lay me in a casket. He's God. Put me in a cradle. He's God. He was God when I got here. He'll be God when I'm gone. God! God. If you don't serve him, he's God. If you don't love him, he's God. And if you don't believe in him, he's still God.
Y'all gonna make me up, act up in here. Sit down. God. <laughs> Sit down. Let's go deeper. He don't know who he's fooling with. I'm stubborn too. Yeah, baby, I'm stubborn too. Don't get that twisted. I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this in a permanent way. I want to, I want to tattoo this in your soul. I want to attach this to your mind. I, 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 I want to stitch this into your understanding about God. I want you to understand that you live in time. God visits time. He spends vacations in time. <laughs> yeah, he spends vacations in time. He incarnates in time, but he lives in eternity. Okay? See, like you're sitting in section A, and this is section B, and this is section C, but see, from where I am, I can see all of it at one time because I am not sitting in a seat, I am standing above it all. God lives in eternity, we live in time. So let's imagine past, present, future. Let me get back so I can get a good. I can see all of it at the same time. I am the same. They can see, can y'all see me up there? Oh, that's the poorest year I ever heard in my life. Can y'all see me up there? Can y'all see me right there? Can y'all see me right there? So if this is the past, and this is the present, and this is the future, all of you can see me at the same time? So the Bible says I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God lives in eternity. He is above all things. He is before all things. And by him all things consist. Meaning that not, when, when we say God is omnipresent, it doesn't just mean that he's in Alabama and California and New York and Europe and Africa and Ghana and Australia. That's true. He's in North America at the same time. That's true. But it also means that he's in all time periods. Omnip he's, he is in the past. He is in the past. He is in the present. He is in the future. I want you to get this in your head because this, I can already tell I'm not going to finish, so I might as well break this down because I'm still in verse 1. I want you to get this in your head and get it straight so that you can understand he is the only one that you can pray to in your present about what hurts you in your past. And he has the ability to go back in your past and heal you from something that hurt you in your past. The person is dead. The house is turned down. They got a Kmart built where it used to be. God said, I don't care nothing about none of that because I am the same. Uh, yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if yesterday's hurting you, I can heal your past. I can heal your present. What? You worried about your future? I got that too. I'll go into your future. Your fight is fixed. Your end is settled. I determine your end from the beginning. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. I ordained you and I sanctified you to be because I'm God. Somebody shout, God! I am the maestro of time. I am the absolute, yeah, there we go. We're getting there. I am the absolute maestro of time. Time serves me. <laughs> time worships me. Time is on my staff. Time is on my payroll. I created time to release 
what I decreed in eternity. Come on, come on. Are you with me? Are you with me? Stay with me, stay with me. Look at somebody say, it's only a matter of time. You might not see me as I'm going to be, but it's only a matter of time. I might not look like I'm there right now, but it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. It might look like I'm drowning, but it's only a matter of time. It might look like I'm not gonna make it, but it's only a matter of time. Don't bet against me. 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 Because it's only a matter of time. You think you got the upper hand today, but by the time we get to tomorrow, God has already got it fixed. Your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. Neither have entered into your heart the things that God has in store. Hallelujah. The things that God has in store for them that love him, but it had been revealed unto us by his spirit because he's God. Somebody shout, he's God. He's God. We're not going to pay this stuff no mind. I was preaching before I had a mic. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I was preaching before I had a mic and I'm not going to let the enemy stop me from getting this word because this is somebody's breakthrough word. If it wasn't a breakthrough word, the enemy wouldn't be fighting it. If it wasn't a breakout word, the enemy wouldn't be fighting it. If God is liberating your soul through this word, give him a crazy praise right now. Now watch this, I'm going to go just a little bit deeper. There are three books in the Bible that start with God, and none of them explain him. Stop trying to explain God. Just stop trying to explain God. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is. that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if I have to prove him, you can't come because you have to have it fixed in your mind that he is. Did you get that? He that cometh to God, he that cometh, so I'm not even to God. While I'm coming to God, I must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I know you think you got saved at the altar, but the truth of the matter, you got saved when you started moving in his direction because the very thing that drew you to the altar is that you first believe he that Coming to God, come here. When you start stepping off the boat, Peter, you're already walking in God. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Slap your neighbor and say, I'm after him. I got up an hour early because I'm after him. I came to church because I'm after him. My body told me to stay in bed, but I'm after him. My flesh doesn't even want me to be here, but I'm after him. My joints are aching, but I'm after him. There's something he's got I want. I'm after him. You have to know that he's an absolute, not a maybe, not a question mark, not a source for debate and argument. He is. <laughs> So the writer of Hebrews does not explain him. He explains everything else. He does not explain him. He just starts out, God, <laughs> who at sundry times and in diverse manners has spoken unto us by his prophets. Uh -huh. But in these last days, he has spoken unto us by his son. This is the timeless This is a timeless thesis of God. Hebrews doesn't just do it. The Gospel of St. John does it. 
in the beginning was the and the word was and the word was no argument, no explanation, no debate, no question mark, no argument. It's an absolute fact. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now there was a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He was not that light, but sent to bear witness of that light, saying, There is one who is coming after me who is mightier than me, whose shoes I'm not worthy to latch it. He indeed baptized you with water, but I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the wonder of his glory. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. But make no mistake of it. Make, make no mistake about it. In the beginning was God. So Hebrew says it. John says it. Genesis says it. In the beginning, God. It's not talking about his beginning. It's talking about yours. He has no beginning or ending. <laughs> That's why he don't have birthdays. He's ageless. He's timeless. Time works for him. Time works out his will. Look at your neighbor and say, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, yeah, it's already released. It's coming in a matter of time. Look, look at me. You watching me online? It's coming in a matter of time. Stop being worried. Stop being petrified. Stop being upset. Stop being nervous. Stop being impatient. God has said what he has said. He cannot lie. It's only a matter of time. Time works for him. Time punched the clock in the book of Genesis. And the evening and the morning was the first day. It was the first day time went to work. Time took a job in Genesis. Started Working in Gen oh, I, I gotta stop. I gotta quit. Time took a job in Genesis. Time got hired in Genesis. And the evening and the morning was the first day. But before there was a first day, there was a God. Before there was a first star, there was a God. Before there was a first sea, there was a God. Before there was a continent, there was God. Before there was a star, there was God. Before there was a planet, there was God. Before there was Mars, there was God. Before there was Saturn, there was God. Before there was Pluto, there was God. Before there was a man, there was God. Before there was a family, it was God. Before there was food, there was God. Before there was a tree, it was God. Before there was grass, it was God. Before there were oceans, it was God. Before rivers landed into seas, there was God. Before seas ran into oceans, there was God. He controlled the oceans. He controlled the land. He controlled the sea. There was God. God is the God of the universe. That's why the first chapter here says that he is the God of the universe. What are you doing praying to that which he created? I make cakes, but I'm not a cake. I build buildings, but I'm not a building. Don't walk up to the building and try to talk to me because the building is made by me, but it's not me. He made the universe. You're praying to what he made. I got to stop. Yet I understand your confusion. Yet I understand your confusion because you have noticed that the universe has a method. It has a system. It has a circulatory system. It has a circulatory system. It rotates in a system. That's how time came in a system. The spinning of the earth around the sun, it rotates in a system and you notice that your body has a circulatory system. And so because your body has a circulatory system that causes you to have life and your universe has a circulatory system that causes it to have life, you ran up to it and said, mama, but it's not your mama. It has your same DNA, but it's not your mama. The reason it has the same DNA is because it was created by the same God. So don't confuse your older brother with your daddy. God is your father. Our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in... Come on somebody, did y'all get that? Did they go over? I understand why you think the universe is God. You were made of it. 
you were made of it, but not by it. The same wind that blows through the air fills up your lungs. You were made of the dust of the earth. And when it's all over, you go back to what you were made from. I don't care how cute you are, you're going to end up dust. I don't care how fine you are, you're going to end up dust. The reason you're going to end up dust is that you started from dust. And so when you look at the ground, you see the connection and the resemblance. And you say, Mama, but the ground is not your mama. You were made from it, but not, not made by it. I'm going to go a tiny bit further, see how far I can get with it. He is in the beginning, and he says, look at this, I love, I love how, how bold he is. I alone am God. <laughs> I alone am God. Beside me, there is no other. I have no competitors. I have no competition. I'm in a class all by myself. There has never been a God before me. There will never be another God after me. I alone am God. Now let's bring it down. God who, God, God who is blessed has blessed us. Let's bring it down. I alone am Thomas Jakes. There will never be another Thomas Jakes. There has never been another Thomas Jakes. I looked for another. I could find no other. That's why we have degrees of loneliness because you are looking for yourself and you can't find yourself. You can have a twin brother and it's still not you. You can have a twin sister and it's still not you. It's part of your likeness of God. I alone am God. You need to receive this in your spirit because you were created in his likeness and in his image. You alone are you. That's why grief is difficult. Whenever you lose some Somebody. Nobody can replace this, somebody you lost because that person is unique. There will never be another person like them. That's why you ought to cherish people while you got them. You ought to love them while you got them. You ought to adore them while you got them because they are a designer's original. There will never be another person like that person ever again. They're in a class all by themselves. You know why? The universe didn't make me. The stars didn't make me. The moon didn't make me. The sun didn't make me because if they had made me, they could make another one. But God made me. He used the universe as ingredients, but God made me. He used the same system, the same circulatory system, but I am unique and fearfully made in a class all by myself. Nobody can think like me. Nobody can walk like me. Nobody can talk like me. Nobody can put things together like I put them together because I'm unique. I'm an original. I'm a one of a kind. Glory to God. Look at my house. Look at my clothes. Look at my Look at my identity. Look at the way I fix my hair. Look at the way I raise my kids. Look at the way I talk. Look at the way I move. I am in a class all by myself. There will never be another one like me. And once I get happy with being me, I can enjoy being me. The problem with you is you keep trying to copy somebody else as if they were better than you. And you have not discovered the joy of being you. The moment you get happy to be what God created you to be, the moment you settle on the fact that it's cool to be different. It's okay to be an original. The moment you settle on the fact that there will never be another you, hence you are valuable, you will stop allowing people to devalue you because you are in a class all by yourself. Somebody shout me down in here. He is, I'm going to close, he is before all things, I'm going to try to make it to this point. Give me just a little bit more. I'm going to try to make it to this point. Can I, can I go a little further? Okay, okay. I, I'm good for it. I, if you're good, I'm good. See, the hell, hell don't want me to finish it. God says, I am that I am. You sit up for saying, who am I? As soon as you settle on, I am that I am. The good and the bad, the right and the wrong, the weak and the strong, 
I am. Part of my beauty is in my flaws. <laughs> Y'all can't handle me. Part of my mastery is in my mistakes. We teach people not to make mistakes. How can I discover if I don't make mistakes? You've locked the hands of my creativity, binding me with your judgmental attitude. While you make mistakes, you don't allow me to discover. The way you discover is by making mistakes. How many times do you fail before you win? Before you find a cure for cancer, before you find a cure for AIDS, you have to fail over and over and over and over and over again. If I stop you from failing, I stop you from succeeding. Yet we compress creative minds into man-made systems that you call education, which is really indoctrination. And indoctrination becomes incarceration. And, and we teach them there is only one right answer. That's not right, there's all kinds of answers. The horse was an answer for transportation. The stagecoach was an answer for transportation. The, the steam engine was an answer for transportation. The gas-driven automobile was an answer for transportation. The electric car is an answer for transportation. Soon there'll be flying cars. There's an answer for transportation. There is no one right answer. So stop arguing with people over who's right. You can both be right. It's pers yeah, let me stop it. It's perspective, it's perspective, it's perspective, it's perspective, it's perspective. I walk into a dining room, I look at a dining room table, I say that's nice, and I mean it, and I'm right, based on my perspective. Ten years later, I go back and look at the same dining room table and think, what in the world did you, were you thinking? What in the world was going on? Why did you do this? Perspective, you are never finished growing, evolving, becoming. Stop looking down your nose at other people. What you think today, you will not think ten years from now. So stop being nasty with what is just your perspective at the moment. You are evolving. And we have stopped people from evolving. That's what is disruptive thinking is all about. It, it is making up your mind that I will not be incarcerated by your indoctrination, which limits me from evolving into who I was meant to be. I am that I am, it declares him but refuses to explain him. If you could explain him, you could create him. Anything you can explain, you can create. You cannot explain God. He will not be explained. He cannot be explained. He must be revealed. He is God all by himself. He is the ancient of days. He is the summation of wisdom. He is the master of eons, ages, and eternity. He is in full control of that which is and was and is to come. He is God. That's why we worship him. We don't worship him because we're weak. We worship him because he's strong. We don't worship him because we're ignorant. We worship him because he has all knowledge. We don't worship him because we lack. We worship him because he's full. We don't worship him because we're subservient. We worship him because he's all masterful. He's in a class all by himself. We worship him because we see something in him that we couldn't find in the ocean, couldn't find in the river, couldn't find in the stream, couldn't find in your lover, couldn't find in your boyfriend, couldn't find in your kids, couldn't find in your grandkids. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You've been looking for God in all the wrong places. God is not man. God is not your husband. God is not your wife. God is not your kids. No, it is not your mama. Stop being disappointed about something that you should have never asked them to be in the first place. Can't nobody be God but God. Stop worshiping people. God is God. Preachers are not God. Bishops are not God. Elders are not God. Presidents are not God. Kings are not God. Money is not God. CEOs are not God. None of them are God. Talent is not God. Hip hop is not God. Rituals is not God. Basketball is not God. Football is not God. God is God. God God, 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 God is God. He always will be God. He's God all by himself. And maybe everybody in the room doesn't get it, but there are some people in this room that understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. And that's why you're here this morning, because you understand God. I'm not going to be able to finish because I got too much. I got too much in me. I haven't even dealt with his scepter. 
I haven't even dealt with his scepter. I haven't dealt with his scepter. I got to deal with his scepter and I can't run through his scepter because his scepter is justice. Justice is how he reigns. Justice is how he rules. I'm going to have to pick it up. I'm going to have to take it further. Let me stop with this. God. Let me stop. The Bible begins and ends with God. Watch this. Throw the Bible away. You begin and end with God. The doctors will say, I give your mama six months to live. She might live six years, she might live six hours. Truth of the matter, all they can do is practice medicine. Practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice is not the recital, it's a rehearsal. You know why they can't be sure? Because the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And when he gets ready to take it, he'll take it. He'll take it. He'll take it while you're signing them up for hospice. He'll take it while you're trying to get them ready for a walk. When God gets ready to take you, he takes you. And when God gets ready to bring you, he brings you. You can be on your way to the delivery room. You can be in a cab. You can be in a car. But when God gets ready to bring you into this world, ready or not, here I come. You started with God. You end with God. Just like your Bible, you start with God. You end with God. Everything about about you has something to do with God and what you keep looking for in other people will never be in other people it will always be in God and as soon as you get tired of wearing yourself out trying to make other people be your God you will fall in love with your God everybody stand I'll stop the message is the timeless thesis of God. 